Hey, and uh, but I wanted to just kick this off with a few words um, around this project and sort of what we uh, what we're working on. So. Um, you know, I think th I wanted to start off with, I think, one key point, which is uh, for us at Facebook, being open about all of our technology at scale, the stuff that we're doing to really solve the hard problems that make Facebook uh, what it is today is very, very important to us. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of different things, um, some expected, some unexpected, um, a lot of work on open source. Uh, in the last year or so, James and team have actually taken a, a new approach on making sure that our open source projects are actually more robust from a community perspective, that they're actually better in sync internally and externally, um, and that we're really focusing on like key key parts of our stack and actually going deep versus kind of just hucking things over the wall, which you may have thought we used to do a few years ago. So um, we're really trying to, I think, bring a lot more quality to our open source uh, efforts. But this applies not only to software, this applies to a lot of things that we've done in other parts of our infrastructure. So a couple years ago, we did uh, and open sourced all of our hardware and our data uh, data center design. If you follow the Open Compute project, you can see a lot of the stuff that we're doing to build and operate some of the most efficient, some of the fastest performing, sort of the most flexible uh, compute storage networking infrastructure that runs Facebook. And today we actually are 100% OCP in our data center. So what we design and what we talk about and what we run in the project with the community is actually what is the back end and what runs Facebook today. So we are, uh, you know, we build this stuff and not huck it over the wall. We actually have to make it work at our scale. Now over the years, um, for the last decade, I'd say, you know, uh, since Mark started working on Facebook, uh, back in, in his dorm, PHP has always been a really, really essential part uh, to our stack. And you know, call it what you you know what you want, but PHP for us has been a tremendous uh, advantage in terms of moving fast and being able to really conceive of ideas and features. Um, both externally as well as internally for tools, et cetera, and being able to get those to market, get them to the people using Facebook, to employees uh, really, really quickly. And, you know, we've done a lot of work to kind of put in abstractions, to make it faster and easier to do things like data fetching and caching and privacy checking and different uh, functions, um, you know, kind of the rendering, et cetera. And, you know, as of uh, a few years ago, 2009, 2010, we had a, a pretty concentrated effort to make PHP faster and to make sure that it scales for uh, a site like Facebook. And, you know, now with uh, HHVM, which hopefully you've heard about and used, and previously the Hip Hop Compiler, you know, we are running this new runtime for PHP at scale. And we do today with the most number of engineers we've ever had in the company, with the most lines of code we've ever had in the company, we are actually increasing our development development velocity, we push the live site at least twice a day today. Right, so we change the site for 1.2 plus billion people uh, every day, at least twice a day, and so that to us, in terms of maintaining the developer velocity and the kind of productivity of our product teams, is really, really paramount for kind of our engineering culture and for what we believe in is is our mission. Um, you know, so how did we get here? Today we're going to talk a lot about Hack and, and Julian and, and team are going to uh, go into a lot more cool details and just uh, heads up, I had nothing to do with Hack, so I take no credit, uh, just like James. Um, so you will hear from the team, I'm not part of that. Um, so the... Uh, the, ha the hack effort really started about two years ago, and, and I think the, it's an interesting story for me um, that I think it's it's uh, useful and sort of valuable to share because, you know, about two years ago, Julian and, and Alok were actually in a different part of the organization. They were in our site integrity team um, doing a lot of stuff to make Facebook safe for all of the hundreds of millions of people at that time using Facebook. So hackers and spammers and fishers and all these people that would do nasty things to Facebook. Um, Julian was part of a team that does a lot of a lot of crazy hard work to, to, to keep the site safe. And you know, and, and Julian was working on um, kind of a bunch of tools, trying to like doing static analysis and a bunch of stuff for our code, looking at ways where engineers who were building products were unintentionally harming, you know, users or themselves. They were just, you know, things that were uh, kind of sprouting up and we were trying to do this asynchronously where we'd run these analysis tools and then open tasks and chase people down. 
And at some point, that becomes a losing battle, right? Because you get uh, to be at a scale where your your velocity, your changes, the number of engineers, you can't keep up with this churn. You can't. You're always lagging the the vulnerabilities that may be getting exposed in the code. So Julian Olo kind of went off and said, "Okay, well, we got to do you know one better here, and and let's start working on um, you know a new system. Let's let's think." kind of uh, crazy here, what could we do? And there was this, you know, notion of a strict mode that they were trying to do, playing around with. They didn't want to do a, you know, boil the ocean, sort of like, we're going to just mandate this to be like something that we flip the switch and every developer at Facebook has to now start coding this way. Um, they worked really hard to kind of build something that really met the requirements of the problems that they had identified in our code base and what they were seeing and what they had to fight day to day. And then they kind of put it out there. They then went and had a conversation with the HHVM team, who at that point didn't exist, right? The HHVM team was still working on something that not, had not been put into production. So they were actually going uh, you know, head to head with their own sort of uh, challenges of getting HHVM to a point, performance point where it was um, able to replace the, the previous compiler. And so the teams kind of worked it together and you know the the Julian Alo kind of started you know investing more in this we put a, a a bigger team around this and um what was cool about this is that you know we didn't ever have any sort of you know uh management decree to do this we didn't have some like architecture board that got together and said this is the way Facebook's going to run we really had two folks who cared a lot about making um, you know, the, the, the lives of developers here uh, more productive and safer and us being able to maintain this, this philosophy and this culture of moving fast. And they built something that was just hands down better than the world that the developers were living in at that time. And naturally, everybody just started peaking up interest. We started doing more education. These guys were really, really receptive to feedback. And they got a ton of like you know gnarly feedback about what uh, hack was and wasn't, and, and sort of uh, educating the whole team. So uh, to me, it's, you know, and we are you know here, and you'll hear a lot more about what it has to offer and a lot more technical details today. But I think this story highlights to me a couple things, which is one is, you know, for us, this didn't take a big team. This started off very, very small. Uh, two is that this was something where the team, these guys were allowed to just sort of go off and be bold and try something that was going to be pretty disruptive to thousands of engineers here at Facebook. Um, they actually took a lot of feedback, found a really, really nice solution, and built something that was strictly more valuable and better for engineers. And, and engineers over time just like wanted to be in this world and not the old world. So there was no kind of like management or, you know, centralized decision making or anything in here. These guys went off, strictly just built something that won the hearts and minds of all the engineers at Facebook, and here we are. Um, the other thing that I think you'll hear about today, which is uh, beneficial of Hack, is that it is um, it is a try before you buy, right? It is something where you don't have to wholesale flip everything over. You can start experimenting, and it applies for people who have small code bases, big code bases, small teams, big teams. Um, and I think that's like a really nice uh, process. It's not it's it's not a it's, it's not sort of a jarring experience to get to to get onto Hack. Um, now that being said, I, I, you know, the only thing I'd sort of um, maybe wrap up here with is the the stuff that we really care about um, related to Hack and HHVM and some of the other stuff that's going to come out uh, over the coming months here really is all about us maintaining developer productivity and developer like safety, right? Because we have a growing team. This team is around the world. We're working on lots of different features, lots of different apps, um, and we really want to make sure that the engineering organization continues this pace of um, you know sort of productivity and and sort of being able to build stuff and ship stuff fast. So there's a lot of investment that we put into sort of developer infrastructure that um, I think has a pretty positive ROI for us. It's a core competency that we really believe in and all engineers at Facebook care about this, whether it be developing their own tools or being part of this core team it is part of our um, you know, uh, of sort of what our focus is. Um, the last bit that I just close with is that, you know, today is really all about kicking off the community effort around this. So, you know, you're going to hear a lot today from uh, the team here. Hopefully, it's a chance for you to actually put some names to faces and voices to, you know, uh, Twitter handles or whatever. And like you actually get to meet the team who is uh, building this thing, who cares about this thing, and who's going to shepherd this uh, throughout the next, you know, several, several years. Um, but it is very, very early, right? And, and we don't want to do this alone. We think this is actually, and, and has had a 
pretty terrific impact uh, inside of Facebook, and we really think this is going to be valuable to the broader community, but we really want everybody's help and feedback here. It is very, very early, um, and we need everybody's help. So, you know, ask questions, uh, you know, voice your complaints, gripes, all of that, you know, uh, to Julian, actually, he's, he's great. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we want to learn. We actually want everybody to help here. So, um, you know, just enjoy the day. There's a lot, uh, lot coming at you in terms of content. And uh, if you have questions, please speak up. Thank you all.